Could Pope Francis be the false prophet? According to Scripture, the greatest religious leader in history, the Antichrist's right-hand man, a.k.a. the false prophet, will arise from Rome to force humanity to worship the Antichrist and deceive countless people near the time of Christ's return. The false prophet is the leader of the false church, the harlot, in Revelation 17, 1-5, and there is strong evidence that this false church is the Roman Catholic Church. Thus, it is highly likely that the Pope in charge of the Catholic Church at the end is the false prophet who works with the Antichrist throughout the tribulation period. From a prophetic standpoint, out of all the popes who have come and gone in the past century, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, a.k.a. Pope Francis, who became Pope of the Catholic Church on the 13th of March 2013, has accomplished more in the last two years than all these popes combined. Pope Francis even comes close to filling the bill on the false prophet. 1. The false prophet promotes the worship of Antichrist. Revelation 13, 12. So it is likely the false prophet will be a leading religious figure prior to the rapture, in order to ensure a global following for an Antichrist declaring himself God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 Not only is Pope Francis the top religious figure, but he is also more popular than any political world leader, according to a recent poll. Pope Francis holds the record for amassing one million followers on Instagram in the shortest amount of time, under 12 hours, and is one of the most influential world leaders on Twitter, followed by more than 40 million accounts. Pope Francis also rules over half of what is called Christendom, with its 1.3 billion Roman Catholics. The Pope is positioned better than anyone on the scene to fulfill this prophecy. 2. The false prophet sets up a living image or statue of the Antichrist that must be worshipped. Revelation 13, 14, and 15. Pope Francis is already beginning to prepare people of the world to worship images, figures of living men. On April 16, 2017, a wax image figure of Pope Francis was set up for an Easter Mass. The statue was afterward transferred to the Petropolis Wax Museum, where it is on permanent display. The Roman Catholic Church has always used idolatry as a means of deception and have been making images for people to worship for many centuries. Thus, is it really any wonder that Pope Francis and the Catholic Church are starting to use wax figurines to deceive their flock? There is also speculation about whether this image of the beast, Revelation 13.15, is going to be an artificial intelligence AI robot, and interestingly, Pope Francis is very up-to-date on AI. Pope Francis has attended many technology conferences on the topic of AI and even mentioned it at this year's World Economic Forum, which many news reports admitted was an unusual topic for a pontiff. Could Pope Francis be preparing for the creation of a future AI robot in the likeness of the Antichrist? 3. The false prophet will show his power by performing great deceptive miracles, Revelation 13, 13 and 14. Performing miracles is nothing new to Pope Francis. Pope Francis is credited with many healing miracles and has already performed one miracle in which he turned dried blood into liquid. Interestingly, when Pope Francis visits the United States, the liberal press admired the Pope for his alleged power over the elements. The Daily Mail Online heralded the dozens of rainbows seen in Central Park as people waited for the Pope. Fox News' Shepard Smith even found it interesting that New York should have already been in the throes of autumn, but for the Pope's visit, summer was still there and the trees were still green. The false prophet is going to manipulate the elements. Revelation 13.13 13. 4. The false prophet will force mankind to receive the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, 16 and 17. Many evangelicals, fundamentalists, and Catholics believe that RFID implants are the mark of the beast and are thus outraged by the technology. 
Yet in a controversial move by the Catholic Church, Pope Francis has come out in vocal support of RFID chip technologies and the extraordinary potential they hold. Francis said, We have examined the scriptures thoroughly, and I can conclusively say that there's nothing to indicate that RFID chips are satanic in any way. If anything, these devices are a blessing from God himself, bestowed upon humanity to solve many of the world's ills. In addition, Pope Francis' private meetings with tech giants, including Apple CEO Tim Cook, former Google CEO and Alphabet Executive Chairman Eric Schmidt, Instagram CEO Kevin Systrom, and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, makes you wonder, could Pope Francis be preparing for the implementation of the Mark of the Beast in America and around the world? Note, Apple, Google, and Facebook are part of five American tech companies that dominate and control every bit of the digital life of an individual. 5. The false prophet, along with the Antichrist, will promote and enforce a totalitarian world government, a global economic system, and a universal religion. Revelation 13, 12. Ever since the very beginning of his papacy, Pope Francis has been pushing for global unity in religious matters, global unity in economic matters, and global unity in political matters, calling for a one-world government and a new global political authority. Interestingly, Shimon Peres, former Israeli president, has wanted to establish an international body representing the world's major religions with Pope Francis as its leader. Perez states, Perhaps for the first time in history, the Holy Father is a leader who is respected not just by a lot of people, but also by different religions and their representatives. 6. The name of the Antichrist will add up to 666, Revelation 13, 18. And so it is not unusual that the name of his future false prophet may also add up to 666. In ordinal gematria, that is, basic gematria, where A equals 1, B equals 2, all the way up to Z equals 26, the name Pope Francis equals 122. Both 666 and Chi Xi Stigma, Greek for 666, equal 122 in the ordinal gematria. Furthermore, the Pope's title is Vicar of Christ, Vicarius Fili Dei in Latin, which also equates numerically to the number 666. The false prophet has two horns like a lamb, Revelation 13, 11. In the Bible, the lamb represents Christ, the Lamb of God. The Pope takes the title Vicar of Christ, meaning he is presented as Christ on earth, in his place. So he is literally the most famous man on earth to be like a lamb, or like the lamb. In addition, the Pope's mitre literally has two horns. If you go to the Catholic Encyclopedia, they themselves call it a two-horned mitre. Indeed, the Pope is like a lamb with two horns. Note, this verse is clearly symbolic, although it's interesting how it also fits the Pope in such a literal sense. 8. The false prophet's message is the message of the devil and Satan, Revelation 13.11. Even the media have picked up on the fact that Pope Francis talks a lot about Satan, the devil. Nonetheless, Pope Francis' false doctrine alone makes it clear who he serves. Pope Francis declares Lucifer as God, declares having a personal relationship with Jesus is dangerous, denies the existence of hell, claims atheists will go to heaven if they are good people, and that salvation is free agrees with the evolution-slash-Big Bang theory, and rejects creationism, sees nothing wrong with homosexuality, etc. All the greatest heresies and lies of Satan. 9. The false prophet will deceive many, even the elect, Matthew 24, 22. Pope Francis speaks boldly against the Bible and the Catholic faith almost every week without anyone to stop him. 
The silence of many proves that Pope Francis is the greatest false prophet in the history of the Church. 10. The false prophet's inward impression is fierce and dangerous. Revelation 13, 11. Pope Francis has been known to attack anyone who opposes or dares voice disagreement with him. Just this year, the Vatican took new measure to punish critics of Pope Francis in a move that seems to belie the Pope's earlier call for greater dialogue and debate within the Church. The Vatican suspended historian Henry Sire after he was revealed to be the author of a best-selling book, The Dictator Pope, The Inside Story of the Francis Papacy, a critical examination of the pontificate of Pope Francis. In it, Sire portrayed Francis as an authoritarian leader who does not brook criticism or opposition. Contrary to his public persona as a jovial man of the people, Sire wrote that Francis has turned out to be a papal tyrant, the like of whom has not been seen for many centuries. And under his administration, the Vatican is systematically silencing, eliminating, and replacing critics of the Pope's views. He declared, When publicity cameras are off him, Pope Francis turns into a different figure, arrogant, dismissive of people, prodigal of bad language, and notorious for furious outbursts of temper, which are known to everyone from the cardinals to the chauffeurs. 11. The false prophet will be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Interestingly, not only does this idiom describe Pope Francis perfectly, but so does the literal meaning. The Pope literally dresses in sheep's clothing. He wears a pallium, which is a shawl made out of lamb's wool, raised by Trappist monks outside of Rome. It has embroidered on it the feet of lambs. No false prophet has ever worn such a deceitful and expensive religious vestment. And of course, he wears a white dog collar, which is slang for a clerical collar, and marks him as a wild dog, a wolf in sheep's clothing. 12. The false prophet kills people who don't follow the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 15. Coincidentally, Pope Francis is the first such pope in the history of the Roman Catholic Church to be a Jesuit. Who can cause more harm and martyrdom than a Jesuit pope? One of the main enforcers of the Roman Catholic Inquisitions were the Jesuits. Circa 1400, Heretics are tortured and nailed to wooden posts during the Roman Catholic Inquisition. Pope Francis has taken and administered the same satanic Jesuit oath, which includes the following appalling statements. I promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage war, secretly and openly, against all heretics and Protestants, as I am directed to do, to extirpate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, nor condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive those infamous heretics, rip open their stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infant heads against the walls in order to annihilate their execrable race. 13. The false prophet is an enemy of the state of Israel. Daniel 11, 40-41 Like all popes before him, Pope Francis is absolutely an enemy of the state of Israel. The decision by Pope Francis and the Vatican to grant diplomatic recognition to the state of Palestine and his rejection of the U.S. move to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital attest to this. 14. The false prophet intends to change times and law. Daniel 7, 8, 20 to 22, and 24 and 25. Pope Francis can modify divine law as he pleases. One Roman Catholic writer quotes, The Pope can modify divine law since his power is not of man but of God. In Francis's first year as Pope, various possible changes to Catholic doctrine were discussed around the Vatican. The change to grant communion to Catholic couples who are divorced and civilly remarried. The change to grant communion to non-Catholics. And the change to grant church blessings to gay unions. 15. The false prophet will influence the kings of the earth. Revelation 16.14 
and 18.3. Today, so many of the European Union's political leaders are turning to Pope Francis, a religious figure, for leadership and guidance. In a historic moment back in 2014, Pope Francis addressed the leaders of Europe, the European Parliament, in Strasbourg. Just this year, French President Emmanuel Macron held an intense meeting with Pope Francis, discussing global issues, including the fate of migrants coming to Europe. The very fact that this religious leader is able to influence the leaders of Europe in this way, helping to give them advice and exhortation, shows the great authority the Church has in the heights of power in Europe. No other religious leader has been given such a privilege as the papacy. 16. The ultimate source of the false prophet's power is Satan. Revelation 13.2. So I expect the false prophet to be surrounded by religious and demonic symbolism. The religious and demonic symbolism around Pope Francis is very troubling. First, the way Pope Francis stepped onto the world stage was rather alarming. On February 11, 2013, Pope Benedict XVI announced his resignation, making him the first pontiff in 600 years to do so. Exactly six hours after the shocking announcement, lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican not once, but twice. Just a coincidence? Jesus saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning, Luke 10, 18 and Revelation 12, 9. Lightning can also be a token of God's wrath, 2 Samuel 22, 15, Job 28, 26, 37, 4, Psalm 135, 7 and 144, 6, and Zechariah 9, 14, representing God's judgment on the world. Revelation 29. Perhaps the Vatican lightning shot was a warning from God of events to come. Second, Pope Francis's predecessor stepped down as Pope on February 28, 2013. Then 13 days later, on 3-13-13, make note of the number 13, at 7.06 p.m., 7 plus 6 equals 13, Rome time, Pope Francis was selected as Pope at the age of 76, 7 plus 6 equals 13. He took on the papal name of Francis, named after St. Francis, a 13th century saint, at 8.13 p.m. Rome time. Even adding the numbers in this election, 3-13-2013 equals 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 3 equals 13. Back in 1969, Pope Francis was ordained a priest also on the 13th day of the month, 13th of December 1969. In Revelation 13, 18, the word 603 score and 6 equals 313 ordinal. And it's in this 13th chapter we are given a detailed description of the false prophet. The number 13 is long associated with the devil and is used throughout Satanism, commonly associated with bad luck. Third, Evil groups, such as the Illuminati and the Freemasons, use various hand signals to show their allegiance to Satan, and Pope Francis has been flashing satanic hand signs for years now. Many times in public, during the course of his papacy, Francis had flashed the 666 hand sign, the satanic horned hand symbol, and the hidden hand mason sign. Fourth, Twice there has been a photo of Pope Francis having horns on his head on Time magazine's cover. Were these deliberate? I don't know. Could Francis be the false prophet? The Bible makes clear that the man of lawlessness, a.k.a. the Antichrist, will not be revealed until the restrainer, the Holy Spirit indwelt church, is removed. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 7 and 8. Since the false prophet rises to power after the Antichrist, Revelation 13, 11, no one will know for sure who the false prophet is until the rapture occurs. That being said, we can speculate, and it certainly looks like a possibility, especially given the shortness of time. 
while I am not willing to state that he is the false prophet, Pope Francis certainly seems to be a prototype. Thus, the point of this article is not to identify who the false prophet is, but to warn those here for the tribulation. Also, whether Pope Francis is the false prophet or not, Francis is certainly fulfilling his role as a false prophet and possibly paving the way for the final false prophet. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Matthew 24:24 24, 24, and Mark 13:22.